I want to show you how easy it is to create this basket weave pattern. I've used a super bulky yarn to create extra texture and make it super plush. It's quick, it's easy, and you could use any yarn of your choice. I'm using the Barnett blanket and I'm going to be using seven skeins of yarn. But for this tutorial, I would really like to show a quick and easy sample size so that way you can see exactly what's going on from very beginning to the end. So first thing I'm going to do is create a slip knot and I'm using a 16 millimeter crochet hook. Once I've tightened it around the crochet hook, I'm now going to loop through and create a chain of stitches. The length of your chosen blanket will depend on how long you want to make your chain. I'm going to be using a sample of 20 stitches. If you are a beginner, I really recommend to try a sample just like I'm going to demonstrate here. And this will really help sharpen your skills so you know exactly how the pattern works. So what I'd like to do is create a chain of double crochets. So I'm always going to be starting on my crochet hook with two loops. And then I'm going to make another stitch by going into my first loop. Now I'm going to have three loops on my crochet hook. Then I'm going to wrap, take the working yarn, remove two loops. Then I'm going to do that again and remove two loops. So now I have one loop. Then I'm going to wrap around my working yarn. So I always have two loops on my crochet hook. You've basically created a braid with your chain and I'm going to be using that top bump in the braid to create my double crochets. And really all I'm doing is creating these posts and these posts are what we're going to be working as basically stitches, but I'll get to that in just a minute. So you always have two loops on your crochet hook, go to your next bump in your chain and now we're going to do that double crochet. So you put your hook into the loop, Pull the working yarn through, you have three, remove two, remove two again. You'll be repeating this exact double crochet throughout the entire blanket, but we're not going to be using these little chain stitches. We're actually going to be using these posts that we've created from the double crochet. So you start with two loops, add a loop, now you have three, remove two, and remove two again. That's the double crochet. The biggest reference through this entire pattern is creating these posts by the double crochet. And what we're going to be able to do is stitch around these posts and that's what's going to give us the basket weave pattern, but we're going to get to that in just a second. Again, you're just making double crochets across your entire chain and then as soon as you get to the end there's going to be another key factor that you need to remember throughout the course of the whole blanket. And again, you can use a bulky yarn, you can use a much thinner yarn, you could make a blanket, and you can even make something really small like face or dishcloths as well. But as we get into it, we're actually going to be making the basket weave, and I wanted to show you a sample of a big, big basket weave blanket I did. And what I've used is the post to create kind of this vertical and horizontal pattern and that's exactly what we're going to be getting into. So you can make it as big as you want or as small as you want. It will all depend on the post pattern you want to create. For the sample that I'm about to show you, I'm going to be doing a post pattern of three. So three post forward, three post backwards, then we're going to do three rows. When you get to the end of your first row of double crochets, that slip knot is still considered a stitch. Most important, it's going to be adding two loops at the end of each row. So just add two loops and then you're going to turn your work around. That is actually going to be considered your first post, those extra two stitches, but that's going to make sense in a little bit. The blanket that I'm showing is a rows of four and four. So, but the sample I want to show you is of three, so that way you can see it nice and clearly on the video. And again, this big blanket, I did a row of 10 back posts and 10 front posts. But you can do any number you want. If you want to do five, you want to do four, but again, for the sample of the video, I wanted to show you with three. But it looks the same on both sides and it's really fun to do. It creates a really beautiful texture.
So let's create our pattern of posts. So for the sample again, I'm going to use three. I've already started my first post with my extra two links that I've created at the end of each row. And I'll repeat that and show you as we get into it a little bit more. So I'm going to be using the posts that I've created with these double crochets as my stitches. So the first one already counts as a post, but again, don't get confused. I'll get to that in just a minute. So this is how I'm going to create my front post using that double crochet. I'm going to go into the post and my first one was created. So now I'm going to do two. It's going to feel a little wobbly at first, just because it's quite bulky with the yarn that I'm using. So it'll kind of twist up a little bit, but once it starts to get a little volume, it will take shape. So now I have three, what I would call front posts. Now I'm going to go and create three back posts. So you're going to go into the back of the post to do your double crochets and we're going to do three. So three front posts. Now I'm going to do three back posts. And remember, if you're starting a sample just to try the pattern out, it will feel a little twisty and a little bit awkward at first. But once you get a few rows onto it and it creates a little bit more of volume, the actual pattern will take shape, I promise. So now that I've done the three back posts, I'm going to go and turn it and I'm going to do three front posts. You can see the posts really easily and especially when you're going to be doing something kind of on the bulkier side like I'm showing you here. But like I mentioned, you can do this pattern with any type of yarn you want and depending on the project you want. But nothing in the pattern other than three front, three back changes. You're always going to be doing a double crochet throughout the entire project. When I first learned how to do this project, I think the only thing that I would always kind of mess up a little bit was adding those two stitches at the end of each row when I flip my work around. So what will happen is, is your sides won't be nice and straight or even. So it'll cause a little bit of a wobble through your project. So it's really important to add those two extra stitches at the end of each row. So I'm just gonna finish the third back post and I'm going to now go to the front. So as you can see it looks very twisted but that's okay. Once I get a few more rows on it will actually start to take shape. So just a constant double crochet, three front, three back. And like I mentioned this applies to any pattern of basket weave. So if you only want to do two front, two back, or you want to do four front, four back, Everything that I'm showing you here still applies. So it's really up to you what you want to play with. And it can be a lot of fun just to put that challenge of the different types of front post, back post numbers that you choose. And again, it can depend on the project, whether it's a dishcloth or a blanket. Now that I'm getting to the end, I'm going to do my last back post, double crochet. And remember, make sure you add those extra two loops and then you're going to turn your work around. Now that I've done two full rows, I've got one more to do. Then this is where the switch will happen. But don't worry about that. Let's just finish our last row. So I'm doing three front posts, three back posts, all double crochet, and I'm doing three rows all the same. With this kind of yarn, if you have a different size crochet hook, that's okay. I have a 10 and a 12 I've used this yarn for. It just means that my loops will be a little bit smaller. I like to use the 16 millimeter because this is a bulky yarn and I want the project to be quite bulky. But that's, again, it's total preference. So that double stitch that I told you to do at the end and then flip your work around is actually creating a nice sharp edge to your work and it actually counts as a post on every row. So it just, it kind of follows through. That's just the way the double crochet works. I found it very confusing when I first started, but it's always going to follow suit to the next two posts that you do. So never worry about how it looks. Just remember that it keeps it nice and straight on the side, but it's really important not to forget those two extra loops at the end of your blanket. What I want to be able to show you next is how we're going to actually do the exact same thing, but we're going to reverse our posts. Meaning what I did as a front post 
it's now going to be a back post and this is where the actual basket weave pattern takes place and like I mentioned you can make placemats out of this you can make dish cloths face cloths and you can use any size yarn that you want so I'm just going to carry on doing my double crochets following the exact same pattern so the best thing to remember is the number that you're using of posts so if you're doing three post four post front and back that's how many rows you're going to create with the exact same pattern then I'm going to show you how we're going to flip that even by just watching what I'm doing it's really easy to follow along so if you ever need to come back to this video just to kind of start from the beginning I've had to do that with a few videos and it really helps catch it on once you've caught it it's like riding a bike you won't forget it so now I'm going to finish my last row of back posts. Once we get to the last post, as you can see, I'm just going to do a back post. Then I'm going to add those two loops at the end before I flip the work around. And just so you can remember, those two end loops are actually a full post. So you're going to be going into the next post. And again, that's just creating a nice straight line for your project. So I'm going to work on this last row of double crochets. And now I've officially done three full rows of double crochet doing the exact same front post and back post. You can kind of start to see it already, what looks like a front post and which ones look like a back, back post. So let me just whip through this last row really quickly and then I'm going to show you what the reverse is going to look like. So last double crochet of this row and then I'm going to yarn two more loops before I flip my work. Then I'm going to show you what we're going to do in reverse. As you move forward to identify the front post and the back post, this is how I remember it. The front post is going to be vertical. The back post is going to be horizontal. So now I'm going to do three full rows of these double crochets, but I'm going to go in reverse to what I just did. So I did a front post, now I'm creating a back post. These are back post. Now I'm going to create front post and I'm going to do this for the next three rows. And that is the entire pattern that we're just going to keep repeating. So again, depending how many posts you want to create, so whether it's two, three, four, ten, you're going to do it in the front, then you're going to do the exact same number into the back, and that's how many rows you're going to do before you flip your pattern. So for the blanket that I made, I started with a chain of 80, and then I did it in posts of four, so four front, four back. Then I would go four rows up, reverse that, and then I would then reverse it back. And that's what's creating that really, really amazing basket texture. And as you're starting out, always remember each row before you go and flip your work around is make sure that you didn't miscalculate because it does take a little bit of practice when you're learning a pattern. Now that I finished my first row of three, doing my posts in reverse to what I started with with the first three rows, I'm just going to kind of fast forward a little bit. And now I'm on my third row and this really shows the definition of what that basket weave pattern looks like. Once I get to the end, again, I'm going to yarn two stitches there at the very end. So add those two loops and then I can flip my work over. And there you go. Now you officially have six rows, three, and then you reversed it. This is when I did the blanket of 10. So I did 10 front posts and 10 back posts. And definitely once you get a few rows going on your blanket, it kind of smooths out and is a little less bulky. But once you get going, it stitches up very, very quickly. Thank you. 
I'm going to start my next row of three and you can see just below that the stitches lay horizontal so now I want them to go vertical so I'm going to make front posts so you can't really lose if you stop and put your work down you'll be able to identify exactly what row and where you're going to be at because the stitches below will identify and they're pretty easy to count with the basket weave stitch that's what I love about this pattern so front post sit vertical back posts sit horizontal so that's the key to remember as that way you can identify what row you're on what stitch you're on and then you can see how many rows you need to go as far as the number of posts that you decide to do your basket weave so again that's one of the key elements to creating this pattern if you're going to do posts of three four or ten that's how many rows you're going to go until you reverse the pattern so this is how easy it is. It's just a little bit of practice. So if you have some leftover yarn laying around, grab a crochet hook and give this a try. You'll really find it addictive. I know I do. Once you're done your project, I also want to show you how you can close your blanket. And what I love doing when it comes to creating throw blankets is I love to create borders around them. So I'm going to show you what I did for a border and how easy that is. And it looks really beautiful with a contrast as well. So as you can see, you can always tell what row you're on by the number of your posts. And the back posts are going to sit horizontal and the front posts are going to sit vertical. So I'm just going to finish up my last row and then I'm going to show you how you can close off any blanket or basket weave project. And with this particular pattern, it will look identical on both sides. So I'm going to finish that last row and then I'm going to show you how easy it is just to kind of cast off. It's a double crochet so you don't have to go and actually ring up all of your stitches. Once you get to that last loop and you want to stop, just cut your yarn off and then go ahead and tie. I normally tie two knots but you can just use one and then you can just cut off the tail. Now I wanted to show how I do a border around a super bulky blanket, especially crocheted. I think it looks beautiful. It creates a beautiful embellishment around the blanket. So I'm going to show you in a white contrast so you can see. The blanket I actually made was with this doodle. It's super thick, but it didn't show very well. So I'm just going to, on the sample, show you with just white yarn. It's just a cotton yarn. And all I'm going to be doing is kind of making a slip stitch all the way around the border. So you always have a loop on your crochet hook. Go around to each stitch all the way around your blanket. Wrap the loop working yarn. Pull through. That's just a slip stitch. It's really easy. It's like a single crochet all the way around. And it almost kind of looks like a really nice even braid all the way around your blanket. And you can go around and make your border a little bit thicker and do two or three rows of this, or you can just do the one. Total preference is up to you. Borders around a blanket just kind of give it a little bit more definition and it looks really striking when you use something of kind of a contrast. When I get to a corner of my border, I like to put two stitches in each corner. This just kind of helps square it off a little bit. You'll see what I mean when I show you a little bit more. And I purposely try to use a different textured yarn other than the one that I made the blanket or any project with. This is also a great way to use up any extra yarn you may have laying around that would be a really nice complement to the blanket that you've made. So as you can see, it just kind of squares it off and just makes it a little bit more even when I add those two stitches in each corner. So I use this really shaggy style yarn. It's called the Doodle. Everything that I've used in this video is going to be in the description box below. But the reason I didn't want to show it on the video very much is because it's really hard to see what I'm doing. So I used the yarn that I did in the sample so you could see much more clearly. But it does create a beautiful embellishment around the blanket.
every single week we've been going over since this litter of puppies have been born and we've had one of them pick us out as far as who we're going to take home but it's been such a sweet sweet treat to go over every week and watch them grow and learn so we're really looking forward to bringing this little guy home and i think we've picked out a name which i'm going to share with you on my next video and thank you so much for your community post suggestions some amazing names it was really hard to pick one for this little guy but as you can see he's ready to learn and discover and we're really looking forward to getting to know him it's so hard to believe that he's already six weeks old so he'll be definitely joining us in the next few weeks and we really appreciate it that the breeder Catherine's allowed us to come over and intermingle with everyone as well as let him get used to us as well Thanks so much for watching. I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. Until then, take care. Thank you.